what is the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and who is at risk of the ovarian hyperstimulation? We need to be a little careful uh, with the linguistics here because even the stimulation of the uh, ovaries during the IVF cycle is sometimes still labeled as a COH or a controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. Meaning that normally in the cycle there's just one follicle growing here. We're actually supporting all, all the anthral follicles recruited for this cycle and we're mo motivating them to grow. Whenever there's a larger number than, uh, let's say, 15, some set this uh, uh, threshold at 18, some at 20 follicles of a certain size, then it's uh, usually felt as a pressure in the belly. The ovaries grow larger. Usually they're about the size of a plum during the stimulation. They can grow to the size of an orange or a grape. Uh, grapefruit even. So uh, that can bring a certain pressure and discomfort. Still, during the stimulation itself, there is minimal or no risk of the hyperstimulation. The problem or the, uh, the syndrome uh, usually <clears throat> only ensues after the so-called uh, maturation trigger shot is distributed. This used to be just the HCG hormone, either pregnant or vitrile, which uh, um, actually supports the ripening of the eggs very successfully. It has a positive effect on the <coughs> endometrium, on the receptivity on the endometrium, but it has a rather long biological half-life. And uh, in those cases where there was a larger number of follicles, more than 18, more than 20, and then this shot was actually, um, after the, its distribution, working slowly through a time, frame, a time period of six or seven days, this was the situation where the hyperstimulation -stimu eventually started to bother the patient. Fortunately, in the past, five, six, seven days, there is an alternative to that. It came actually with a new uh, cryopreservation methods, where now the embryos, if we perform the so-called freeze-all, meaning we freeze all the embryos and perform the transfer later. Now the current uh, cryopreservation methods are so gentle that the embryos can uh, withstand the cryopreservation very well and uh, without any lowering of their success rates. Thanks to that, we don't need to focus on the endometrium and the triggering of the egg maturation is performed with a different injection which stops it effe its effect after approximately 12 to 24 hours and no hyperstimulation ensues. So currently we are talking about the so-called hyperstimulation free clinic because we have alternatives which successfully help us avoid this problem and this should be now a problem of the past.